According to available statistics, the city of Hiroshima had a population of nearing half a million. Nestled between hills on three sides, with a river winding its way out to sea on the fourth side, the land on which the city is stood is dead flat. Something in the range of eight miles west is the distance across the plain in any direction. Well, just before the war started, uh, my father, John Picard, he uh, had just passed his exams and became a pharmacist. In fact, he was just about to take up his first place in Sutton when the war broke out and that messed everything up. So he was then posted onto a hospital ship called the Koroa. And as a result, because they were going around literally picking up prisoners of war and treating them for all the injuries that they'd sustained, he fa finished up touring the world. The station is a thick stone concrete building. This survived, but most of the woodwork inside was badly scorched. All the shelters and waiting rooms on the platform were of wood. They either collapsed or caught fire. Imagine this chaos, all in a second or two. The station is nearly five miles from where the bomb exploded. Workmen are today heavily engaged building new wooden platform shelters or putting fresh glass in windows. Over the bridge, one sees a vast area of ruin. Not a single building stands as it did originally. Few buildings there are at all, and these are temporary jobs of wood and plastic to provide houses and shops. The scenes that he saw at Hiroshima made such an impression that he had to write something down, and therefore wrote quite a long letter to my grandfather, his father, uh, together with uh, some photographs that he had taken at the time. You've got to remember that London was blitzed and yet London survived. And that was using many, many hundreds of bombers to, do, to blitz London. And yet this city was wiped out with one bomb from one plane. And I would imagine that was a very big cultural shock to people at the time. As, as the plan uh, walk that he did through Hiroshima, he came across what he thought was the remnants or ruins of a shop. I think it was a bicycle shop because there were molten uh, bits of metal twisted and one or two sort of resembled spokes and wheels. And then on one side of the what was the building, he saw what, what was left of a cash register. The old fashioned cash register, the ones, you know, they go point like that and the drawer comes out at the bottom. Well, on old cash registers, the little above the little drawer, you also, always had a, a, an area where you used to put your notes before you gave your uh, customer the change and then you put your note into the drawer. A lot of old cash registers use marble for that little area and he found that marble on that cash reg register had melted under the heat uh, and so he broke a little bit off and that's the bit that he brought back. He, I don't think he really wanted to talk a lot about it because of the impression that he made. But in later life, when I became a teacher, all of a sudden he opened up a little bit more because he knew that I was teaching up to A-level radioactivity. And he says, oh, Brian, I've got some things that might be useful for you in your lessons, you see. And they were, they were marvellous because I could then talk and show my pupils what an atomic bomb could do and hence if you like, enforce the idea of the terrific amount of energy that is stored in the atom. We who have seen the results of atomic bombing marvel that any of the inhabitants survived at all. I've seen one victim who escaped with severe burns to his face. Terrible facial disfigurement he will carry all his life. He was lucky to live through it. I think the main thing of the documents is that it underlines what the power of uh, atomic bombs are or is. We're now getting through to a generation, I mean I'm a generation that was not, not in the war.
I think these documents ought to be preserved so that it is a reminder and hopefully also a discouragement from using such weapons in the future. It's so easy for the following generations to forget what has happened and so the, the memory doors and therefore the effects perhaps of what these weapons can do is forgotten. And so anything that will jog the memory and bring it more to life for the next generations along might uh, serve a very useful purpose in preventing such a war breaking out. I do not know what impression this description will have upon you who read it, but if it in some way conveys in some small measure the realisation that in any future war civilization can be wiped out, then this letter will have served some useful purpose.